Since both Megalodon and Leviathan Melvilli existed at approximately the same time, there's always speculation as to whether or not they fought with one another. Scientists say there is evidence to suggest that the behemoths may have had a few face-offs in their day. Of course, that begs the question as to which creature turned out to be the biggest, baddest beast in the prehistoric oceans. Let's take a look at the two legendary monsters and see if we can figure out who would have won the battle between Leviathan and Megalodon. Number 8. Contenders Let's check out the stats for our contenders, starting with Megalodon. Most sources estimate the length of the legendary beast to be at around 60 feet long, 18 meters, and weighing around 130,000 pounds, that's 59 metric tons. With a shark that's bigger than a city bus, it's easy to understand why Megalodon has resonated so strongly in the popular culture. If this were a battle of brand awareness, the big shark would be an easy winner. Did you know that while the beast is often depicted as a gigantic version of a great white shark, many experts say Megalodon may have more closely resembled a basking shark or a white shark. Leviathan Melvilli is known from a fossil of a 10-foot long, 3-meter skull that was unearthed in Peru in 2008 and dated to the Miocene Epoch. It was named for the biblical Leviathan as well as for Herman Melville, the author of Moby Dick. Those are worthy namesakes since this creature was a marine mammal that was comparable in size to the present day sperm whale. Its weight was estimated at nearly 126,000 pounds, 57 metric tons, and measured just under 60 feet long or 17 and a half meters. Classified as raptorial sperm whales, they had huge functional enamel coated teeth on their upper and lower jaws. Modern sperm whales only have teeth on their lower jaws. By all accounts, this monster should rank as one of the largest apex predators of all time. And just so you know, we'll be referring to this beast as both Leviathan and Leviathan. Number 7. Teeth Megalodon's very name translates as giant tooth. Measuring more than 7 inches, 18 centimeters, experts describe the animal's teeth as thick, robust, and serrated and the shark's jaws could exert one of the most powerful bite forces of all time, estimated at some 36,000 pounds or 16 metric tons of force per square inch. Some sources estimate those numbers are even higher. As it is, most experts tend to regard the big shark's bite as the strongest ever among any animal. In a sense, this animal truly would have been a real-life jaws. While the teeth and bite force of Megalodon are formidable, Leviathan had choppers that were arguably even scarier. These ancient whales had teeth that could measure more than 14 inches, 36 centimeters long, or roughly twice the length of the Megalodon. Not including tusks, Leviathan possessed the largest teeth of any animal known to date. While we couldn't find an exact bite force for this creature, many experts theorize it would have exceeded that of Megalodon. Most sources agree that among tetrapods, or animals with four limbs, this specimen would have had the largest bite. And if you're wondering why whales are grouped with tetrapods, it's because they evolved from ancestors that once possessed four limbs. Number 6. Modern Day Relatives Since none of us have ever seen an actual living Megalodon or Leviathan, it might help to use some modern day counterparts to better illustrate the animal's appearance. The great white shark is often compared to Megalodon. In fact, most sources describe it as a great white shark on steroids. They are related with the modern beasts that can weigh more than 4,000 pounds or nearly 2,000 kilograms and measure up to 20 feet long or 6 meters. They're noted for their ferocity and for preying on marine mammals. Ironically, great whites are sometimes linked to Megalodon's extinction. Researchers say that some 3.5 million years ago, the great whites may have outcompeted their larger relatives for the same food sources. Meanwhile, Leviathan has been described as an extinct genus of sperm whale. The present day versions can measure about 60 feet, 18 meters, and weigh more than 112,000 pounds, or 51 metric tons. That's not too far removed from the dimensions of their ancestors. Sperm whales are especially noted for their large heads. Those noggins contain brains that weigh about 17 pounds, or 7.8 kilograms, which is the largest of any animal, living or extinct. They possess the spermaceti organ, which was also found in Leviathan, and was thought to provide functions including echolocation and communication. The ancient animals may have also used it for ramming their prey. Unlike their forebears, today's great white sharks and sperm whales are not known to regularly clash with each other. But great whites have been known to do battle with some other cetaceans. The big fish are sometimes preyed upon by killer whales. Those marine mammals are the only cetacea known to successfully hunt, attack, and prey on sharks. Not only great whites, but also hammerheads, makos, and humongous whale sharks are targeted by the whales. Number 5. Feeding Behaviours Both of our contenders existed in oceans around the world some 13 million years ago. 
and since they favoured much of the same prey, there would have been ample opportunity for them to encounter one another. For one thing, they were both surface hunters and prowled the coastlines. Among other prey both beasts coveted were giant sea turtles, larger sharks and whales, and plenty of other marine mammals including porpoises and dolphins. In fact, marine mammals were a major food source for both of our contenders. If they did clash, it probably would have been fighting over one of these specimens. Number 4. Vignus, Brains and Brawn We noted the dimensions in metric and imperial units for both contenders earlier, but here's a quick recap. Both beasts had a size and weight that was very close to the others. Megalodon measured about 60 feet long and weighed around 130,000 pounds. Leviathan was around 57 feet long and weighed 125,000. Obviously, the tail of the tape is very close here. So who gets the advantage in this category? The whale's great mass is viewed as an anti-predator adaptation and enabled it to go after larger prey. In addition to its immense body, the warm-blooded marine mammal presumably had a brain that was larger than other large sharks within its territory. If its brain did indeed match its brawn, then Leviathan may have possessed much greater intelligence than the fish. That means it would have been capable of quicker reactions while engaging in close quarters combat. Then again, the whale's immense size could have worked against it. Being the biggest beast in its range would have only presented a bigger target to an opportunistic apex predator like Megalodon. There's evidence to suggest that the sharks would bite through the tail vertebrae and flipper bones of larger whales to immobilize and then kill them before feeding. It's kind of a close call here, but when we factor in the relative intelligence of both beasts, we give the advantage to Leviathan. As a cold-blooded shark, Megalodon probably possessed a smaller, more primitive brain that led it to act on instinct. If this strategy of shearing off the whale's fins did not work, it may not have been able to improvise its way out of a tough spot. Number 3. Speed We also have to factor in the speed at which these animals were capable. Megalodon is estimated to have typically swum at a speed of 11 miles per hour, 18 kilometers per hour. We couldn't find a precise estimate for how fast Leviathan can navigate the waters. Given the creature's relationship to sperm whales, the modern day cetaceans might provide clues regarding to their ancestors' speed. Sperm whales can swim up to 28 miles per hour, 45 kilometers per hour, and are known to be fairly agile in the water. So speed and maneuverability might have worked in favor of the whale. The shark's speed may have been exceeded and countered by the whale's maneuverability. Number two, fighting styles. Before getting ready to rumble, let's consider how each animal would deal with its opponent regarding a blow-by-blow -blow throwdown. Megalodon was an ambush predator that attacked quickly from below. As noted, they like to immobilize their prey before killing and eating it. Experts think Leviathan like to use their large heads as a battering ram to subdue larger prey. It's speculated that they would have butted into their victims with enough speed to knock them unconscious and then start to feed on them with those humongous choppers. Experts have based their presumed headbutting action on the accounts of modern day whales which have rammed into whaling vessels. They may also use a strategy similar to today's killer whales. Those cetaceans will pursue a victim until it's exhausted and then drown it. With that in mind, Leviathan might have tried such a tactic on Megalodon before the big shark could execute an ambush move. That doesn't mean the shark couldn't tear a few chunks out of the whale's body or cripple its fins. This is where the shark's primitive strategy could backfire. If it had its victim on the ropes and bleeding, it would instinctively stay there to finish the job. But if Leviathan was still active, it could very well have used its speed, powerful jaws and teeth to crush the shark's spine and kill it. Of course, the battle could have easily gone the other way. If the huge shark was successful in the ambush attack and gutted the whale, then Megalodon would have notched another fin. With its large, thick body, immensely powerful bite force, even the monstrous Leviathan would have been down for the count. Sometimes focus, raw power and determination is all it takes to get the job done. Number 1. And the winner is... Well, the easiest answer would be to call this one a draw. But since that's kind of a cop-out, let's give the hard-fought victory to Megalodon. There's no denying the giant shark's power and legendary bite force, which may have ultimately prevailed over its opponent. But let's not forget that Leviathan was only discovered in 2008, so it's a relatively new species and there's still a lot to learn about the beast, including physical traits that might have overwhelmed its opponent. So for this episode though, we'll go with Megalodon scoring a prehistoric TKO or technical knockout over Leviathan. A battle royale between these two behemoths invites some huge debate here, so be sure to tell us who you would pick in this clash of prehistoric titans. Would it be the massive marine mammal or the cold-blooded killerfish? Give us your pick and reasons in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button and click the bell for notifications for our next exciting episode right here.
on Epic Wildlife.